Okay, three very important statements here that are closely related but very distinct, and you have to be careful because the way that I've seen these questions tested is in those one, two, and three statements, okay? And y'all know that those are tricky. Which of the following are true or which of the following have to be false? You have to be very, very particular about the way that those are phrased to be able to say whether they're true or false. So if your function's differentiable at a point, then it is continuous at that point. Now it's very particular that you're talking about the same point. That's always true. If you're not continuous at a point, then you're certainly not differentiable at a point. That is always true. Now, just because you're continuous does not guarantee that you're differentiable. Okay? You can have a continuous function, but it not be differentiable at a particular point. The first example of that that we're going to look at is the absolute value function. Okay? It is the absolute value function. If our function is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2, let's keep on every time you see an absolute value function, you should think I need to express that as a piecewise function. Okay, so let's go back over that. If we're expressing this as a piecewise function, I always do less than and then greater than, so that means that I change my signs for or I change the sign of what's inside the absolute value. Uh, Daniel, you're in this group now. Uh, for the less than, okay, and x minus 2 equal to 0, that gives us our changing point. Okay, so that is what the left side of our function looks like. The right side of the function, we just drop the absolute value bars, so the right side of the function looks like this, and it doesn't matter where I put the equal to, doesn't matter which piece, okay? So if we're talking about the derivative of this absolute value function, well, we can take the derivative of piecewise functions, we just take the derivative of each piece. So what's the derivative of the first piece of this absolute value function? Negative 1. The derivative of negative x plus 2 is just negative 1. So when x is less than 2, our derivative is negative 1. When it's greater than or equal to 2, our derivative is positive 1. It's positive 1. Um, so at 2... Our function is certainly continuous. We don't have a hole. We don't have a vertical asymptote. We don't have anything going on there. Okay, f of x is continuous at 2. At x equals 2, but it is not differentiable. And you can abbreviate differentiable with uh, diffy. because the derivative from the left and the right is not the same. Or you could say that the derivative is not continuous. So in general, the first case of when functions are not differentiable is at what we call sharp points. Now those most likely uh, come into play with absolute value functions. That's about the only time that you've seen a sharp point in a function. Um, I'm trying to think of another example of a sharp point. See here, x to the two thirds, maybe. Uh, most likely, this is tested. They will give you a picture of like a piecewise function, and they'll ask you for which points is the function differentiable, or for which points is it continuous. 
this but not negligible. Here's another example of a sharp point. This is the function x equals two thirds, or excuse me, not x equals two thirds, x raised to the two thirds. Um, if I zoom in a little bit here at the origin, you can see how it looks kind of like, it's almost like the absolute value function, but it's got a little bit more curve to it. Um, this is another example of a sharp point, okay? So that's number one, you need to know. It's not number two at sharp points. Now, we can take the derivative of this function anywhere but at two, okay? Uh, if we're asking what is f prime of zero, that's no problem. f prime of zero is negative one. Zero is less than two, so any time less than two, the derivative is negative one. f prime of 10, the derivative is one, okay? Um, we can take it anywhere but at two. It's continuous, but it's not divergible there. Okay, now another example of when functions are not, are continuous but not differentiable is something that we call locally linear. Locally linear, and here is an example of that, x to the one-third, okay, that's also known as the cube root of x. If you will recall when we studied this in pre-calculus what the cube root of x looked like, it went through the origin. I've got it here on my graph. Uh, we've got a few points here. Um, but this is what the function looks like. It's, it's a completely continuous function. There's not anything that you can't take the cube root of. You can take the cube root of negative numbers, zero, positive numbers, all that good stuff. That's not an issue, but if I zoom in at the origin here, what we're going to see is something called locally linear behavior. See how out the, as the calculator's graphing it, it kind of jumped right there at the origin. Okay, it's drawing the curve, and then all of a sudden it kind of jumps up. If I keep zooming in here, what's going to happen at x equals zero is my function is going to be um, a straight vertical line. And we know that vertical lines have undefined slopes. Okay, they have undefined slopes. So we are unable to take uh, the derivative of this function at zero. And let me show you another reason why. If I take the derivative of f of x here, f prime of x would be, using my power rule, one third x to the negative two thirds. Let's fix that a little bit because that's a little messy. We don't like the negative exponent. So move that to the denominator with the three. And then let's go ahead and write that in radical form. That's the cube root of x squared. So if I'm talking about the derivative specifically at zero, if I were to plug zero into this function, look at what happens. Zero squared is zero, the cube root of zero is zero. So we've got one over three times zero, that's not good, okay? That is undefined. Our derivative is undefined at zero. Um, but this is something that we call, this specific case is locally linear. That is the other case where functions are continuous, but they are not differentiable. Um, so they will, um, they will tell you, a lot of times you'll see it phrased, they'll say um, f of x has a vertical tangent line. At some x value. That means it's not differentiable there. Okay, that's typically how you'll see it phrased. f of x has a vertical tangent line at x equals c. That should automatically make you think I'm not differentiable at x equals 3, or excuse me, c. Um, I can be differentiable anywhere else for that function. Okay, we don't have any other issues for this cube root of x. There are no other issues in its differentiability. You can take the derivative anywhere else, meaning you will get a value for the derivative except for at zero. That's the only problem. 
So um, we've got functions are not differentiable at sharp points, and then they are not differentiable at points where there are vertical tangent lines, or AKA locally linear. Two cases of where we're not differentiable. Okay. Now those are exclusive of, exclusive of if it's not continuous, it's not differentiable. Okay. If it's discontinuous at some point because of a hole or a vertical asymptote, then of course you can't take the derivative. But these are the two cases of where the function is continuous that it's not differentiable. Okay, so let's practice.